the idea behind connectivity uh, as being a basis for community has, well, let me be blunt, ha has reached profound proportions. Thomas Friedman goes so far as to venture that we essentially live in a world now in which boundaries don't really matter. Uh, that we live in a world that is essentially borderless, and he describes this world as flat. And if the world is flat, then we've become, I suppose, a global city, that you can be uh, in any place at any time at exceptionally low cost. This isn't a novel idea. All the way back in the 1960s, it was suggested um, by Arthur C. Clarke that there would come a time when a surgeon in Edinburgh could operate on a patient in New Zealand and that this type of remote uh, connectivity was possible. And in many ways, uh, this describes community and it describes uh, connections, it describes relationships, and it describes perhaps you know, this global city that might uh, shape the future. But I'd venture that we might be getting ahead of ourselves because whilst there's been a broad fascination with the digital era, and it has led to our perception that we are always on and universally connected. If you take an intercontinental flight, you can sit on wireless technology while you're flying between cities. Um, it begs the question, I suppose, which city are you really in? Um, and and this, lend, well, this supports the perception then that we live in a borderless world, always connected, always on. Pankaj Gemawat, the business strategist at Yese uh, Business School in Spain, asked Harvard Business Review readers uh, what their estimate was of different connections uh, across borders. Uh, to what extent do telephone calls travel across borders? To what extent uh, does foreign capital, uh, does capital travel across borders? How many people live in a country that is not their country of birth? And they've achieved essentially immigration um, and the answers to these numbers suggested by the Harvard Business Review readers are given here uh, on the screen in front of you. You'll glean from this assessment that the way we perceive the world is this global city, that we are one community or starting to agglomerate as a single community. The numbers sit, the estimates of Harvard Business Review readers say that about a third of phone calls, about a third of foreign capital, uh, and about one third of people have got across borders. Those are the perceptions, the gray numbers is the reality. 3% uh, of people live outside of their country of birth. This is the same number as in 1900. 10% of capital travels across international borders, which is the same number as in 1900. And when you eliminate double counting, just 20% of world GDP is exported. If you bring the internet into the equation, the telephone calls go up from 3% to 7%. And this is despite the fact that the cost of a transatlantic telephone call goes from about $200 a minute in 1935 to essentially zero today. Um, you know, using wireless technology. We still are not as connected uh, as we imagine ourselves to be. So I suppose you know, I'm venturing as a first idea that whilst there is a perception that we must, might be globalized and living in this giant world city, uh, it's a far cry from that. In many ways, this is a, a tragedy. The elements of exports, the movement of people, uh, the telephone calls and the capital flows across borders can be captured by a framework that Pankaj Gemawat describes as TCIP, Trade, Capital, Information and People. And when we use that TCIP framework, what we find is that as communities connect, as they achieve higher flows of each of these four elements, it translates into elevated incomes per person, lower degrees of unemployment, higher equality in income distribution, and more broadly speaking, greater levels of social welfare and general well-being. 